I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, Monday, July 16, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Berner. Mayor Williams. <coughs> Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Seven members present. Fantastic. If you all don't mind standing for the invitation tonight. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this uh, weather, Father God. Lord, thank, us, thank you for allowing us to be in the greatest country in the world where we can exhibit our freedoms. Uh, here today where we can have elected officials and citizens and uh, the administration all come together and discuss the, it, the concerns and issues and the problems and the greatness that our city has either faced or is going to uh, move forward, Father God, Lord. Please bless this meeting and all who are in it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's hear I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And action on the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Communications, there are none tonight. Mr. Bridge? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the public, members of council. We would like to share with you the city manager's report. And we'll start with our finance discussion with our new finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. And this will be her very first report on her own. Ms. Watson. Good evening. <laughs> I'll start with your June total revenue was $417,691.07. June's total expenses was $344,966.48. So that's always good that our revenue is more than our expenses. Year to date total revenue collected was $3,073,419.65. Year-to-date total expenses are $2,583,223.97. Our audit is going on for the year 2017 right now, and that's moving smoothly, going right along. So that's going well. And our new uh, system, our, from, um, our whole finance system that we're uh, getting ready to get installed is, is moving quicker than expected, and we're happy about that. So uh, in the future, we'll see a little more streamlined reporting and maybe a little more basic understanding of more of the finances with the new system. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah. Any questions for the finance director? Council? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you so much, Ms. Watson. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with our city manager report, our service discussion with Mr. Howard Kipko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, tonight we'll start off with the service departments. Um, as I reported last time, we have done a lot of asphalt repair. Um, but we still have two water main break asphalt repairs to be completed, and as of today, those are scheduled for the 18th on Wednesday. Hydro flushing schedule will be out soon, and that will be the fall time frame. I'll begin with the chief and the water superintendent to get that set. Road de-icing bids are in, and the cost per ton is now $89.95, up from last year's cost of $50.47 per ton. Uh, with the possible new agreement this year, uh, we will be required to purchase a minimum of 80% of our bid amount, which could be between 200 and 240 tons. We typically bid 300. So that tonnage is to be uh, determined here once we get the agreement uh, settled. Uh, 2018 various road projects that is finalized at White Pine, Green Heart, and Furwood are to be resurfaced. The estimated start date for the minor curb and gutter work is the last week of July. Uh, start date for milling and resurfacing is August 1st. The schedule is very flexible due to this being a countywide project. Uh, I've been talking with the county engineer and we're not sure where the contractor A&B Asphalt is going to start first, but I know one thing's for sure, it'll definitely be finished up prior to the Heritage of Flight because they don't like running all the trucks, milling machines and everything during the festival and due to the road blockage. So I will try to keep citizens posted as uh, often as I can and updated. And um, 
the rest are, have been uh, still uh, stagnant as far as the rest of the items that I have on my report. But if there's anything on the report or anything that has come up uh, via council, I can answer those questions or anything you need me to address. Council. Mr. Lighty. Uh, Mr. Pico, um, walking around town, I kind of noticed some of the crosswalks. A lot of the paint is either completely gone or close to it. Is there a game plan of getting those repainted anytime soon? There is. We've had the paint machine out and actually doing some of our own little work uh, to get it uh, dialed back in because it can be, um, we don't want to put the mess out on the street while we, when we first start the machine up. But yes, there is a game plan to do crosswalks, center line, and start working on some more curb where you got the yellow striping for no parking. Very good. Yep. Is that just going to be on Main Street or is that citywide? Well, most of the crosswalks are only up on uh, Main Street and a couple on Church, but curbs will start at one point until we um, either run out of money or paint and then continue it back up um, next spring. Very good. I just, um, you know, going from the park, you know, that, that strip's good right here, but down Smith Street and especially along the lake, I think it'd be important because there's still a lot of foot traffic going down Lake and on Smith Street. You're talking about crosswalks at Smith and Lake? Mm -hmm. Are there no striped? Uh, Not, I think there used to be. And, um, and they're gone, at least on Lake Avenue crossing. Yeah, there hasn't been any stripes except for what was up at the bike path. Okay. Uh, but there hasn't been anything since the resurfacing of Smith and Lake, and that was in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s. They didn't put, bring those back in. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Council, anything? Mr. Cobb? Go ahead. We're going to look into filling some of these potholes up in the streets that we have around the city. I just heard our truck made it through the paint booth. And yes, um, as soon as we get that back, should be any day, we will have the Dura Patcher machine out. We are two months behind because of this. And it is the only truck that we can use with the chute that sits high enough for the Dura Patcher machine. Um, we did get some assistance from Bethel Township. Uh, that assisted us with the Tal Schroyer Dura patching. So they are willing to help in those little small cases, but when we go to do the citywide, that should be any time. Mr. Cook. Mr. Kidko, I'm noticing that salt pricing is up considerably from last year. Do you think it's time we need to do an analysis of utilizing uh, salt prime beet juice? in upcoming years in order if this pricing continues to rise? Um, it does go up and down. I've been in conversation many times with the beet juice and salt brine, and it is not used as heavily as what most think it is, and it actually can stain. Uh, you can get um, growth from it and can be very slick, beet juice can. In brine, we currently don't really have a station to be able to saturate our uh, water with brine. Currently, um, it would take some sort of a, a skid mounted piece of equipment to be able to start making our own brine like the water treatment plant does. Um, but we have talked about it, but um, brine is, uh, there's a couple different reasons to, for us to not really use brine, but uh, I, mean, I always look at it about every year. I think with the pricing that maybe we need to reopen that situation again I know Kettering with Kettering Huber Heights I'm very well familiar with I spoke with both those communities too and it's not used on all their uh, streets and all their areas or their wetters on their trucks right council anything else Mr. Pico no thank you Mr. Pico you're welcome thank you Mr. Pico and moving on with the city manager's report our fire discussion with Chief Trust Mayor, Council, and the public. For the month of June, New Kalal Fire Division responded to 93 EMS calls in the city and six in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to five, five fire-related calls in the city and three in Elizabeth Township. Our year to total date, right now we're at run number 735. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid from either Pike Township or Bethel Clark uh, due to engine, our Medic 52 being on response. We answered one mutual aid EMS call for Pike Township and two for Bethel Clark. In the month of June, the division responded to two overdoses. The division received our first grant of the year uh, from the Ohio Division of EMS for the amount of $4,327. Uh, that will be used for EMS supplies or uh, equipment. Council, any questions? No. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief. And moving on to the city manager report, our complete discussion with Sergeant Underwood. 
Thank you, sir, council, audience. Uh, my report for actually that should have been for June. I put July on there. Uh, New Corral deputies were dispatched to 44 calls. That's down because we had some time off and some sickness, and uh, uniform patrol took up the half of that 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 was needed to do. Uh, so those numbers are what your deputies in New Corral did, not a total. Uh, but our our uh, final totals are pretty good here for this month. Assaults there were zero, domestic violence three, theft one, non injury crash two, injury crash one. Uh, we had citations 11, drug complaint one, overdose one, suicide attempts zero, uh, but we did have two burglaries this time. And uh, the reason I put this in here, I've been uh, getting a lot of questions about it. Uh, it says, as you know, we're losing two of our nuclear law deputies, and that's Deputy Sheila Cruz and Deputy Adam Anderson. That's going to be sometime in mid to late August. Uh, that's tentative. Uh, but it should be in place before school starts, we, we hope. Uh, the replacement deputies will be Necky, Deputy Nick Moody and Deputy Joseph, Joseph Liming. Deputy Moody will replace Deputy Cruz, and Deputy Liming will be replacing Deputy Anderson. Deputy Moody, Moody is an experienced deputy with the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Uh, he has worked second shift and I just currently was assigned to first shift. Deputy Liming has worked as a patrol officer for other smaller police agencies and is currently out on the road uh, with us right now. Uh, other than local drug problems, our city has not had any major problems this summer. Complaints in our parks and pools are at a minimum, and we have not had many traffic complaints. Uh, I was excited about the pool and the parks. Normally we have a lot of complaints in the parks. Uh, the pool seems to run itself. Uh, but we do have some issues up there from time to time, but it looks real good right now. And like always, please contact Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560. If you witness anything suspicious, that could be the phone call we need to solve the crime. And with that, I'll answer any questions if I can. Council? Thank you so much, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on with the uh, city manager report under informational items. Uh, as Ms. Watson had mentioned in her report, our 2017 audit is underway to start on July 9th. We will update council as needed with that. Uh, vacant house counts, uh, count, this is actually good news. Uh, on average, the city averages about 70 to 75 vacant houses in the city. It has been that number since I started as a planning director probably back in 2012. Um, now we are averaging about 40 to 45. So we have seen a decrease in vacant houses that could be accustomed to people buying these houses um, and flipping them, selling them, living in them, uh, whatever the trend may be. We appreciate that trend and we want to see that number go down even further. Copier at the city building. Uh, we have received a second quote from Woodhall. So now we have two quotes on the table. I will be seeking a third before we make any uh, decision on how to move forward with the copier at the city building. As with always, we will bring council up to date with those quotes when the time permits. SSI upgrade to VIP. Uh, Ms. Lawson also touched on this a little bit in her report. Um, we have an implementation update. We had our data preview meeting on 7-9 of 18. We also had a process meeting for payroll and accounting functions the following day on 7-10. And then uh, certain employees did register for the online learning portal on 7-12. Uh, we will need to do an additional purchase with that upgrade, um, and that is quotes for the new printer that was uh, allocated in our CIP for this year. Um, we had originally thought we were going to get uh, up to 5500 to purchase these. Um, I am happy to report that we get multiple quotes back today. The lowest one we got back was 400 with a $25 monthly maintenance fee. Of course, that monthly maintenance fee will handle all uh, repairs to the machine and also all toner replacements. So we will, we will be moving forward with the purchase for the new software program, but we are happy to report that the cost did not come down significantly with the printer purchase. New Carlisle Crime Watch. Uh, I have allocated um, funds to purchase 250 magnets and 250 window, window cleans. Um, I thought I had an image attached here. I do not. So I do apologize about that. Do you have one? No. Mr. Lindsay, by chance? No. 
That's the that's the actual oh. sign. Okay. There's like the little four oh, inch magnets that you'll be able to put <clears> on your uh, fridge and also on your window, like a window clean. They simply say New Carlisle Crime Watch with the sheriff's non-emergency number on there. Um, I did quit my quotes back today on that, and they also came in significantly lower. So I actually will be purchasing 500 each magnets and 500 each window cleans, and the total cost of that will be just under $500. So we are happy to report that those came in a lot cheaper than we have as well. So hopefully the crime watch can get some good many years use out of those promotional materials. And the fun aspect of tonight's meeting, uh, we all know the city has been uh, in the process of upgrading our playground. Well, um, tonight the council will vote on the contract to allow us to go through with that purchase. And I'm happy to report, and I put some extra of these out there at the individual tables. I think council might have color copies with them. What we have got this year is what they call a unity dome. And I'm going to just hold this up. It is a massive dome climbing feature and has a rope section in the middle of it for easy access. It also comes with what they call three sensory panels. And the paint sensory panels will look like this on here. And they range from uh, washboard sensory panels. So when you go back, it makes a bunch of noise like you're doing a washboard. It also has a tambourine sensory panel and a drum sensory panel. The good thing about this dome is that if someone is in a wheelchair, they can literally ride up to the side of it and interact with the able-bodied kids that have the sensory, that are playing with the sensory panels as well. Um, that will be located to the left or in the back of the current playground set. It'd be a great addition to what we have there. And when we're looking at the purchase for this coming year, how are we gonna to add to that? Besides the playground equipment we have, we have here, which is a decent size, it doesn't allow too many kids to climb on it at once. And the people from Play World Mid-States had definitely urged us to get something that could be interactive for a lot of kids at, at, at the same time. So we felt the Unity Dome was the best way forward with that. It is very inclusive, it's very inviting. <clears throat> Along with that, we are getting two of these swings that you actually can strap your child into. If they have mobility issues and they can't sit in a regular sing, swing, you can put them in here and you can strap them in. I know this picture is kind of small, it's the best I could do. Um, so this would be located, one's definitely going to go at Smith Park, and then one's either going to go at Willowick or Brew Big, no, New, Carlisle Brew Baker, Park. New Carlisle Park. Thank you. Um, and we will decide on that and we will let council know as well. The next thing I want to announce is and this was not bought with city funds. It was actually bought by the grant administrator. Um, that is the same grant that we're getting this playground equipment fund uh, from, excuse me. And this is a really cool thing. It's called a bike repair station. This is going to be located in the middle point back there by that local shelter. But it's a little device that if your chain goes or you need air in your tire, it has all these little nice little tools on it that you don't have to walk back to your house to fix your bike. Hopefully we can get that taken care of right then and there. Uh, we did order yellow, so it kind of sticks out from the rest of the greenery stuff back there in the brown structure. So hopefully it will be um, pretty noticeable. So those are the new upgrades we're getting to our playground equipment. I mean, to our playgrounds and the new addition we're getting for the bike repair uh, station. And I do believe that is all I have for my city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council. Mr. Lighting. I don't know about the rest of the council, but I got a lot of questions regarding the fogging for the mosquitoes. Um, citizens just want to know, besides the neutral loud news, thanks for posting when the fog's coming. Is there anything we can do to notify the citizens when the fog's going to come? Yeah, I can. Re who's doing that? Is it health district or who's actually fogging? Health district. Health district. We'll see if they have any date set up and I can put it on the uh, city's Facebook page. <laughs> put it on the water bill too. Um, if there's enough room for that, there's only so many characters we can put on there, but if we can get on there, absolutely. But if not, we'll, seems like almost a priority to put that on the water bill since that goes to every resident Facebook and will be seen by uh, so many people. Yeah. But I also think with the water bills, we're going to do so much so far in advance. Right. Sure. Good. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Council, anything else? No. Mr. Bridge, definitely thank uh, L for all of us. I, I hope we all vote tonight on the new playground equipment. And that's something we talked about during the budget sessions. Yep. I think it's really exciting. And you actually can go online and type into YouTube Unity Dome Play World. And you can actually see the dome itself. You can watch the kids, how they interact, and they play with it. And it's part of their Unity series. It's really, really neat. So uh, that's all I had to say. But thank you so much. Council, anything else? Uh, uh, I, did, I did skip over a section. I do apologize. 
Um, back to the crime one stuff. Thank you, Mr. Kiko. Mr. Lindsay has graciously offered, do you mind? Something. Graciously offered to purchase six crime watch signs for the city. And these are going to go at various interest locations of the town, but they're actual street signs that we put up. These are 12 by 18, and it's going to say neighbor, neighborhood crime watch area. Um, and it has this whole thing that we report immediately to our police department. This is going to go at uh, the four, uh, four major entrances. And then also we're going to do one up by uh, Lake and Scarf. And there's another six location. I don't have my notes with me. Uh, South of but down by the pool that south down by the pool. yeah there's right. an entrance there so this is going to be a great addition to our entrances hopefully if anyone's coming in here to do anything mischievous they'll see these signs and hopefully go somewhere else again mr lindsay it's very uh, nice of you to purchase those on behalf of yourself for the crime watch group thank you You're welcome. that is all i have all right council anything else no thank you so much mr bridge right. comments from members of the public please limit comments to five minutes or less does anyone have any comments? All righty. Committee reports, there are none tonight. Resolutions, we have two. Mrs. Berner. Resolution 18-10R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding, MOU, with the Board of Clark County Commissioners. Council? So moved. And an explanation of this resolution, uh, we have an uh, agreement in place for us to do work out of the county garage. Um, every year we have to redo this uh, MOU. Um, they usually just raise the rates a little bit. Right now it is up to $40 an hour. I think last year was about $38. Um, but this is a, basically a yearly housekeeping. Council, any comments, questions? No. Mrs. Barr. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Resolution accepted 7-0. Moving on to resolution 18-11 R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the Montgomery County Office of Emergency Management. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Make a motion to adopt resolution 18-11R. Second. And an explanation of this. <clears throat> um, I have a little bit of understanding with it, but our fire chief would be the best person to explain this. Uh, I think this is a very uh, innovative uh, MOU we're about ready to get into, and I will let uh, Fire Chief, uh, Chief take it from here. What, it, what this boils down to is with the, the amount of active, active shootings that's gone across the United States, the law enforcement and fire service have started working together to develop a program and a plan to where we can work together on a scene. Uh, one of the biggest problems like at Col Columbine, that type of thing, was having to wait till the building was completely cleared by law enforcement before the EMS could get into the building. Uh, again, losing patients because it could have been a viable patient in there, but having to wait that time. What this MOU allows us to do is that there'll be a uh, forecast site at the fire division. And what it is, it's four different bags, and each bag has different equipment in it, uh, black vest, helmets, lights, that type of thing. And they'll be located, one is with us, one is with Bethel Clark uh, Fire Division, Department. Different departments have them all over the counties. Montgomery County asked us to be, be a part of it, and those caches would be stationed at us with no cost to the division or the city. Uh, and all of our de department personnel will be trained how to interact and how to use this equipment with the law enforcement at a free, free of charge, no uh, cost for the training. This way, if we do have an ins incident in this area, the departments, uh, the sheriff's department, plus also local police departments know where these cash sites are. They can come in, pick up those cash sites, take them to the, to the uh, incident. Our personnel this way also, if they have an incident, EMS personnel can go in the building with law enforcement and get to the patients quicker and get them out. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. <clears throat> uh, Chief, is this the, do you say uh, Dayton Fire Department? No. I mean, uh, Police Department or the County Sheriff's County. Office? Okay. And they're providing the training in, in Montgomery County? 
there's different there's different sites <coughs> all over different other counties different counties have them in our area right now we I have um, one instructor with us uh, Captain McClinn uh, Chief King is also an instructor one of my other uh, lieutenants will be coming in instructor through who he's also a lieutenant with uh, Huber fire and basically it's an online course that you have to take first and then you have to go through uh, two, or two or three different uh, practical sessions of using the equipment, setting it up, showing uh, how it works, and that type of thing. Okay, thank you, sir. Council? Well, Chief, thank you so much. I think it's a great thing to be a part of, especially, unfortunately, in today's society. Uh, we have to do that, but I think it's great, and uh, thinking well ahead of the curve, an unfortunate event like that were to occur, so thank you. Mrs. Barr. Okay. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Resolution accepted 7 0. Uh, moving on to our ordinances. Ordinance 18 15, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the placement of new playground equipment in Smith Park, New Carlisle, Ohio. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to accept ordinance 1815. Second. And an explanation of uh, this ordinance. This ordinance will allow me to sign the contract to purchase the playground equipment, um, the swings and the unity dome that we had previously just discussed. Council, any comments? We have a question. Mr. Lindsay. This is being paid for by other funds, correct? We have allocated 25000 for. Okay, so the yeah. city's paying for some of it? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. <clears throat> Are you good? Yes, I'm good. Thank Council, you. anything else? No. Mrs. Barner. Okay. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ordinance accepted 7 0. You want to read on, Mrs. Burner? Yeah. Moving on to other business. Uh, work session needed. Further discussion on noise levels, nuisance, proper, nuisance properties, and solicitors in the city. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, do you mind if I add to that? Yes. Um, we also would like to add on that we had a meeting with Tom Hill last week who is director of Clark County Community Development to um, have some information so presented to council regarding how we can combat some of these vacant housings that are non habitable um, basically the ones that have a tree through the roof or windows busted out or any kind of major structural de uh, deficit that would make it non habitable. Um, so we had a great meeting with Mr. Hale. Um, and we think it would be great to have him come to this work session. Do we know his schedule? Um, we'll have to get maybe a few dates of a work session and I'll have to coordinate it with his schedule. Okay. Yeah. So would you want us to make a motion now or would you want to get back to us with his dates and then we... Um, let's go ahead, if we can make a motion now to set maybe two dates and I can, that's a starting point. Okay. Because all this has to be done in open session. If I don't yeah. have something from you, then we'll have to wait till next yeah, meeting. Sure. I'm just going to pull Council, does anyone right have here. any dates they would like to recommend? Are we looking to do it on a Monday? Is that best for Council? Council. Monday's fine with me. Monday's fine. Okay, so that puts it as so 23rd. 23rd. Um, I don't know if that's enough time to get everything in order, though. Maybe the 6th. Um, the 30th, meeting. I will not be available. The 6th, we have a regular meeting. 13th? Uh, the 13th is the next one. Yeah. Or we can meet early. Well, some of the people got to drive. So or sometime that week. Yeah, or something. Like yeah, it does, doesn't have to be on Monday. Yeah. Is everybody good with that week of August? August. But if that's 15th? the case, if we're not doing it on Monday, then the 23rd next week. Yeah. Well, still say it's still getting a little short. Okay. So let's make one of them the 23rd. 23rd of August? No, 23rd of July. July. I won't be here in July for the 23rd. I'll be out of town. Would will you be gone that whole week? No, I'll be I'll be home late that day. Okay. 
I would just suggest you give us enough time to gather information and get back find. Uh, yeah. Um, so you want to go like the does August first work? That's a Wednesday. So, all right. Let's try the first. I will not be in town. Okay. Let's not try the first. Um, do you want to do the second or? Do you want to go jump over to the 7th or 8th of August? 7th? Do one date August 7th? Yeah. Okay. Then we had one on the 23rd, but we don't know what his schedule will be. Oh, we do one for the 23rd too? Mr. Cook recommended that, yeah. On August 23rd? Well, we don't know if he'll be able to attend or not, so. So do you just want me to send out What about the ninth, which is a Thursday? So if I give him multiple dates in one week? Yeah, I think the ninth would be good too. Okay. That's good for everybody else. And then- so I think the 23rd I is way short notice for him, especially. Yeah, you know, August 23rd. I'd like to is, advertise it too, and so that puts us on a time constraint yeah. on the 23rd. Um, did you just want to keep the August 21 third one set? Just so we have one if we need to do anything else? That way we already have one set and council knows it's there. It wouldn't hurt. The 21st? 23rd. It's a... Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Well, this, this noise ordinance has been carrying on for quite a while. I think we need to address that and get that thing off our plate. I mean, we'll probably address it on the 7th, too, but if we, I'm saying if we could probably do, like, the 23rd if we need to set one again based off the 7th and the 9th. I have no problem with that. Just so we have all the ducks in a row. Okay. Sounds good. Someone good. want to make the motion? The, uh, oh, nope. just for information, I think the Heritage of the, uh, not the Heritage of Flight, the uh, National Night Out is August 7th. And I believe good. they're going to be having some tables from here, there. Okay. Are you guys having a meeting on August 8th the next day? You're skipping the meeting. You are? No. Okay. No. I don't know if you to want, to to want to take that into How many, how many tables do you guys take, though? Three, I think we're going to get. Um, no, we should have plenty really for a work decided. session because we'll just yeah. we'll have to we'll get, if you want to keep it no well seventh though I'm sure people want to go to National Night Out. Yeah. Do you want to move it to the ninth? So ninth. That, that I'll just give them the ninth. Okay. See what he can do. And then any day that following week, if council's good with that. Yeah, because I'll, I'll if, if it's the ninth, then we'll meet again on the sixth. That way, I'll have communication with him. And then we'll have to we have to redo it. We have to redo it. Yeah. Okay. So ninth and twenty third, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Anyone want to make a motion for that? No motions from anybody. Mr. Mayor, Lowry. make a motion to set the work sessions for the noise ordinances for August 9th and 20 August 23rd, tentatively. Okay. Are we just going to be discussing the noise ordinance that day or the other three items too? I'll try to have some legislation drafted, uh, but your council has to decide what, I can't draft legislation until you guys decide what aspect you want. Yeah. Um, I think with that work session last time around, this man here, there was a great work session. Um, we, what we need to probably do in the meantime is get someone out here to measure the decimal. So I, what I'll do is reach out to the Clark County Sheriff's Office, see if they have any kind of decibel measuring tool. Um, and possibly the county too. And they, possibly I the mean, county. There's still a lot that needs to be worked out as far as you guys want it. Um, what's the decimal cutoff? Do you want a different one for each of your zones as far as your residential zones, your commercial zones, your industrial zones? So there's still a lot to iron out. Um, at the last work session, I, I gave um, those who are here examples of different cities and what they have done. So I would recommend council kind of start doing your own what you guys would like to see. And maybe when we, when we meet on the 7th, I mean the 9th or the 23rd, we have a better understanding of what council wants to set the source as policy for their citizens. Okay. Council, anything else? No. Mrs. Berner? Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. 
Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Work session set. Seven zero. Moving on to the other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. On Tuesday, August 7th from 6 to 8 p.m., the Church of the Brethren will host the National Night Out in their parking lot on Main Street. They will have identical face painting, um, some donation raffles, the fire department, the Clark County Sheriff's Office, and many more will be attending. And then on August 8th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House, they will hold their Crime Watch meeting. Um, I think that's it. Mr. Lighty had an announcement. Yes, I do. Um, Mr. Bridgeler will do this right now, but uh, in my professional job, I have to travel a lot day to day. And I have a new opportunity where it's going to be taking me farther north actually started it and started to take a toll. So I uh, drafted up a letter today. Mr. Bridge, Council, and citizens of New Carolina, it is with great regret today that it is my last council meeting. My full-time job has required me to travel farther north, north and is adding stress to the lives of my family and myself. We have decided to move north outside the city limits in order to give myself a better quality of life by being closer to my accounts that I service. Where I have enjoyed my time <clears throat> serving with the city, I need to make sure I do what's best for my family. I'd like to thank Mr. Bridge and the New Carlisle staff for all their hard work for the city. Thank you citizens for voting me in and trusting me to do what's best for the city. And best of luck to all of council and my future replacement. I hope you all continue to help the city move forward. God bless the city of New Carlisle. Very respectfully, me, Aaron Lyon. Thank you so much for your service. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. You're still under other business, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, in the Crime Watch meeting the other day, we was discussing the six signs that uh, Mr. Briggs said I purchased. I realized that when we did the the uh, purple heart signs, we only put them at two or at four entrances. We have two more entrances I think these signs need to go in or go up at, and that's on uh, North and South Lake. Uh, we have an entrance just across the bridge, I think, by the pool. There's a city sign there, and then at the county line at the North Lake. Uh, uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion if we can to to uh, purchase those two signs and get those installed so all six entrances to this city will be recognized as a purple heart city the uh sorry um, that's good council Pardon me? East and West. Yeah, what did I say? North and South? North and South. Uh, it's East and West. Sorry. I, yeah, that would be East and West, not North and South. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Depends on where you're sitting, I guess. Do uh, you need a second? We already oh, have one for Mr. Shammy. Uh, does Council have any comments or questions at all? Mr. Mayor. What was the cost of the signs again? Ballpark, if you remember? I think they were $70 a piece. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, that was out the, without the pole, though. I don't know. What yeah, we, we got poles. Yeah, okay. we got poles, right? Yeah, we got okay. so like, I don't know how much the polls were, so. 70? Right. Any yeah. council, anything else? Yes, I think we got four. There were 280 total, so yeah, seven bucks a piece. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Cobb? Mr. Cobb? Mr. Cobb, go perfect. In our work session, we addressed several issues. Number one, I presented the... We have a motion on the yeah, floor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you have anything with regards to that motion, Mr. Cook? No. No? Garner, do you want to call the roll, please? Okay. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. Seven zero. Okay, Mr. Cook. <clears throat> Back to my statement. 
at the workstation, I presented several items, one of which was the uh, Public Employees Bargaining Transparency Ordinance, which basically gave council the right to appoint two members to work with the negotiating team in regards to our employees' contract. I would ask council tonight to authorize this ordinance to be placed in the hands of the law director to be brought forth for the August 6th meeting. Council? Mr. Cobb seconds. Discussion? Mr. Bridge, I have a question. Uh, has Lynette reviewed that by any chance for the potentiality of it? And I haven't done anything because I don't have the rest of the council yet. To okay. Kind of watch so, that then she'll got. get back to us regarding the legalities of it all. Regardless Once of you guys put the motion through and okay. she reviews it, she'll let you know. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Oh, and I should disclose, I am familiar with this ordinance, but I was not at the last work session, so I'm going to abstain because I would like to read over all the packet you just gave me today. So. Council, anything else? Mrs. Berner. Okay. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Meaning. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Motion accepted. Six zero. All right. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Robert. I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Mr. Lighty for your service on council. Uh, I didn't know you very well prior to you being on council other than, you know, passing by. Uh, it was great to get to know you and your family better. You're, you know, you're a carbon copy of your father, which is a great man. So, uh, so uh, thank you for everything you've done. This, uh, I'm going to spill the beans on one thing. He didn't want any recognition for it, but since it's your last day, you can't stop me. Uh, <laughs> uh, just something he did for the uh, the pool. You know, the pool had their uh, swim team for the second year in a row, and he called me up and asked if the, the swim team had had their own shirt. So, you know, they didn't. They, you know, they're you know tight on funds as a small team as they are, but he. Uh, he donated him and his wife donated the shirts for the entire swim team which i think was you know close to maybe 30 shirts or so with the logo on it so i know they were very appreciative of it so that's just kind of the, the guy he is uh you know his whole family are great people and it'll be uh it'd be uh, sad to see you go but we hope wish you the best thank you council mr cop Mr. Kiko, I can come back to you. At Scott and Linden, have we looked for a stop sign up there? Since we last talked, I haven't been. I've been out for two weeks and uh, really haven't dug back into it. I think I was only a week outside of that. Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna make a motion. We put a stop sign at Scott Linden. Which correct? Scott Linden. Okay. Okay. Council, is there a second? Second. Second. I would make a recommendation you guys let us look at the legality of before you guys just go ahead and instruct us to put a stop sign there so at the next meeting we will have some more information on you. If that's okay, maybe we can delay the motion until the next meeting. I don't want to have again have be forced to put a sign there and it's not be to standards and then the city can be an actually increased liability due to that. I would agree with that. If we would like to Mr. Mayor. Give one second. Uh, I would definitely think that's something we should probably do is with, is hold off until the next meeting. If that'd be okay with Mr. Cobb, if you would withdraw your motion or move it to the next meeting, just to make sure that it, we get the legalities of it <coughs> worked out through our law director, if you're okay with that. Or maybe amend it to instruct us to look at the feasibility. I think that would actually yeah. be better. That's what I was going to say. Legality, somebody goes through the, in the people's yard and hits the child there. Well, it's we, going to cost the city more. Well, I think we have a due diligence to make sure we do things legally and lawfully and what's recommended by the professionals who put these recommendations together. We'd already looked at this two years ago. I, I had certified traffic engineers uh, already do this intersection already. Yeah. There's not a stop sign that's warranted for that intersection, but we will revisit it, see if anything has been, could be updated as far as data. Um, but again, we, we just, we have to, we have to do things that's recommended. Mr. Cobb, would you like to amend your motion to? I'll amend my motion until the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Council, anything else? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. The, uh, 
the stop sign that Mr. Cobb's speaking of, that is not, that does not go out onto a state route, uh, 571 at that intersection, does it, where he would like to have that? I mean, on the 235. On the 235. I'm wrong into the, road. The, the guidelines and recommendations are not only restricted to your main thoroughfares or state routes, they're also the guideline your side streets and collector streets as well. These guidelines are from the state? Where are they from? They're the, yeah, they're the Ohio Traffic Control. It, there's some long acronym for it, but yes, there's a big green book that we have that we read through and see what, they're, what each type of sign is, uh, whether it's regulatory um, and what, what its uses are for, uh, design, the speeds. I mean, you know, some cities have yields, some cities have stops throughout their residential areas, some cities do not have anything. So there's, there's various levels of what you can put, put up and that kind of guides you. And if that is unclear, then you go to a traffic engineer um, to get uh, some more data for that purpose like we did with Scott and Linden. The information in, in your book that you're referring to that says we can't do that or shouldn't or ought to or maybe or whatever would you like to use can you make a copy of that for council at the next meeting uh it's about that thick not the entire book just um i can get you i think i can get you the web link <laughs> that, that would work too i think get you the web link if i can't um then i can probably bring it by and okay. i mean it's it's huge and uh if i may mr mayor uh, go ahead you have the floor Sergeant, did you have some input on this conversation? Yeah, if it's not properly put up, uh, we write a citation on it, uh, stand a chance of losing the citation. Yeah. Um, we're very careful about speed zones and stop signs and those types of signs. Not necessarily all signs are put up. Uh, we can write citations on because they're not legal. Yeah. So it does we, def we definitely want this to be a legal sign if it if it ever materializes and we also spoke uh, on the on the same corner of speed bumps or the rounded not really a speed bump per se but the four or five foot thing of blacktop has you given any more thought to that mr. bridge or mr. Kiko if, it, if that was all part of that last meeting and I haven't got into any of that again since we our last meeting okay all right, thank you. Thank you. Council, anything else before we adjourn? Mr. Lighty, thank you so much for your dedication and love for our city and all the work that you've done for us. I greatly appreciate it. I hope that you and uh, Stacy and your kids have a great time and uh, enjoy whatever. <coughs> thank you very much. Mr. Lighty. Along, thank you. Mr. Lindsay. Lighty, I'm Mr. Lindsay. My bad. Uh, <laughs> I, get, I did that quite a bit. There's three L's up here. Exactly. I even get them confused. I'm one of them. Uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. When will you be doing all this? You said you already started your job up north? Um, yeah, so I'm just taking up accounts farther north. It's already started. Um, things just kind of escalated quicker than I anticipated. Um, we just talked about moving and we found a place and Things are going quick. So, you know, instead of dragging our feet just and wait till our house is sold, we just think it's best to, to get the ball rolling so we get somebody up here because there's some big decisions need to be made with finances and things going into the new year. So, let the new council member get up here and uh, get the better acquainted to what's going on. Well, on behalf of myself and council, I can speak for council. Congratulations on your promotion. I wish you well in all your future endeavors. And good luck on that new job or new clients. Thank Same you. job, different clients. <laughs> Council, anything else? Mr. Lighty, would you like to do the honor? Yeah. Your last meeting? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighty. I'm going to be We have a second. Second. We are adjourned.